very very sure you've always uh, wondered what the bible means by saying besetting sins all right so <laughs> i'm going to be answering this question what are besetting sins this is uh, one of the things that uh, most people have always asked themselves now friends besetting sins are the ones that we continually struggle with and have weakness towards in the king james version of the bible the word beset is found in hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 it says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us now according to merian webster dictionary besetting sin refers to a main or constant problem a constant problem or fault all right and uh, we understand that basically a besetting sin is one that we constantly struggle with and uh, we are naturally inclined do you have something that is always constantly bothering you a certain type of sin which it seems you can't let go of that is what we call a besetting sin and other translations refer to the sins that uh, beset us as a sin that so easily entangles or sin that just won't let go and the greek word used in this verse means easily and all right like a trap that easily catches a mouse there are some things that easily and snaps everyone has a besetting sin that they constantly struggle with whether it be lying lying looking maybe one step or like become a sin when we are saved as the bible tells us in the book of and truth is not in us rather we will continue to struggle again as sin for the rest of our lives and um, we are constantly fighting against our sinful nature because what the flesh wants conflicts with all the spirit wants Galatians 5 verse 17 says for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary one to another so that you cannot think that you will The Bible gives examples of people who struggle with besetting sins both Abraham and Isaac fell into the same sin multiple times when they lied about their wives to protect themselves think about the book of genesis chapter 12 verse 10 and uh, you can read down to 13 it says this and there was a famine in the land and abram went down into egypt to sojourn there for the famine was grievous in the land and it came to pass when he was come near to enter into egypt that uh, he said unto Sarah his wife behold now i know that you are fair woman to look upon therefore it shall come to pass when the egyptians shall see you they shall say this is his wife and they will keep me but they will save you alive say i pray you that you are my sister that it may be well with me for thy sake and my soul shall live because of thee You see that's a lie. That's a lie that's Abraham trying to lie so that uh, he can get away with it. He doesn't want to die but he still wants to go and get some food and he knows the Egyptians will more so try to kill him and take the wife. And also when we look at uh, Genesis chapter 20 verse 1 to 2 it says and Abraham journeyed from thence towards the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar 
And Abraham said of, his, uh, uh, of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerah sent and took Sarah. You see, he's lied the second time. The first time he told the wife, let us lie. The sec- and also when he reached there, he lied. That's a besetting sin. And also let's see in the book of uh, Genesis chapter uh, 29 mm, 26 actually mm, from verse 7 to 9 it says and the men of the place asked him of his wife and he said she is my sister for he feared to say she is my wife lest he uh, said he the men of the, the place should kill me for Rebecca because she was fair to look upon this is Isaac now And it came to pass, when he had been there for a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was parting with Rebekah, his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold of a surety, she is thy wife. And thou say thou, she is my sister. And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, lest I die for her. You see? Are you seeing Isaac and also his father Abraham lying? Those are besetting sins. In the book of Judges, Samson struggled with lust throughout his life and it caused him so many problems. Let me show you uh, the story here just a little bit. In the book of Judges chapter 14 from verse 1 to 3 the Bible says, And Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all thy people that goeth to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. Mm-hmm. Seeing the point here? Let's continue. Judges chapter 14, verse 16 to 17. Now see the story here. Let's see what really happened. Okay? He is saying that he wants to get a Philistine woman. Now, verse uh, 16 to 17 says, And Samson's wife, wept before him and said thou does but hate me and loveth me not thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people and hast not told it to me and he said unto her behold I have not told it my father not my mother nor my mother and shall I tell it to you and she wept before him this uh, for seven days while their feast lasted and it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay so upon him and she told the riddle to the children of her people you see what really happening here and how things are turning Mm -hmm. let's continue let's read uh, Judges chapter uh, 16 verse 4 to 5 let's see what happened And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver." Making some sense now? Let's finalize with verse uh, 15 uh, to 17 of the book of Judges. Judges 16, 15 to 17. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lie. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so uh, that his soul was vexed unto death. 
that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and shall become weak and be like any other man. And of course you know the story. I don't want to continue. So, you see, Samson struggled with lust throughout his life and this lust cost him his strength and his eyes and eventually cost him his life. In a similar way, David and Solomon both had weaknesses in regard to women and their lust proved troublesome. When I, when I show you uh, the story of David here in the book of uh, the book of 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 2 to uh, downwards, let me just read to you what exactly uh, was going through David and you see some of the besetting sins that freely made David to struggle so much, alright? Now the Bible says uh, from verse 2 and it came to pass in an eventude that uh, David arose off from his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, It is not, uh, is not this Bersheba the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her, and cleanless, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent, uh, conceived, and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. And David said unto Uriah, Go down to thine uh, house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, of his lord and uh, went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down to his house, David said unto Uriah, Come is thou not from thy journey? Why then did thou go down into thy house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house and eat? And drink to lie with my wife as thou liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said unto Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode then in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord and went down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah that he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab served the city that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and uh, there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, he shall say unto thee, Wherefore approached ye so nigh unto the city when you did fight? Knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech, the son of God, who said that did not a woman cast a piece of men from the wall and give the wall? That is the Why went ye nigh the wall? 
then said to thy servant Uriah, the Hittite is dead also. The messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent him for. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the man prevailed against, against us. And they came out unto us into the field, and we were upon them, and unto the entering of the gate. And the shooter shot from off the wall of thy servants, and some of the king's servants prevailed. And thy servant Uriah, the Hittite, is dead also. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let me thing displease thee, for the sword devoured one as well as another. Make thy battle more strong against thy city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her into his house, and she became his wife, and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Have you seen this one? You see what really happened? Because of this besetting sin of lust, David killed Uriah and took his wife. And this is God. That was a besetting sin. Let me show you something else also. Uh, I can Solomon. Is a short one in the book of uh, First Kings, chapter 11, verse uh, 1 to 4. It says, But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Mo Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their God. Solomon claimed unto this in love, and he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart of the other gods, and his heart was not perfect to the Lord his God, and was the heart of David his father. Hmm. So, this besetting sin of lust made uh, Solomon also sin against God. And this one explains to us that besetting sins also affected those in the New Testament. The Apostle Peter struggled with the fear of man, such as when he denied knowing Jesus three times. Do you remember? Peter denying Jesus in the book of Matthew 26 from verse 69 to 75. How he denied Jesus, you know that. And also when he sided with the Judaizers in Antioch and was confronted by Paul. Peter feared men and that was a besetting sin. Let me show you what Paul told him here in the book of Galatians. This is Paul talking to Peter. Galatians 2 verse 11 uh, to 14 says, But when Peter was coming to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain men came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. He was fearing people, the Jews. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that uh, they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? That was a besetting sin. That was something that uh, uh, Peter was struggling with. He struggled with this. He feared men. And that's a besetting sin because we're supposed to fear God. Now, besetting sins do not have to control us. In Christ, we have been set free from our sins and are no longer slaves to sin, as the Bible tells us. 
John 8.36 If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. We are dead to sin. The Bible tells us in the book of Galatians 2 verse 20 I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, as we lay aside the sin that so easily entangled, as the Bible calls it in the book of uh, uh, Hebrews 12 verse 1, we should avoid tempting situations and relationships, making no provision for the flesh. Romans 13 verse 14. And we should pray for wisdom and strength to change our habits. We should saturate ourselves in the scripture. The Bible tells us, Psalms 1 verse 1 to 2, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he mediate, meditate day and night. And John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy truth, their word is true. So you should sanctify yourself by the word of God. And when we sin, we should immediately seek God's wonderful mercy and grace having this promise. In 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We have examples in the Bible of people who sinned and they confessed and God had them. One of those people is David. When he sinned against God by taking Uriah uh, to death and uh, taking his wife, God had him. We see so many times when people repent and God listen. My friends, you can also do likewise. Don't let a besetting sin take over you. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you did learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever I post a new Bible study lesson. And if you'd like to get saved or you need a step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, keepmore.com, for more details and breakdowns. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.